Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a second look here at the updates we've done to our Battle Cruiser prototype. Uh, we had worked on the video previously, but actually got so inspired to continue working on it after the video that it now requires a completely whole new retake on the video to update you on what's going on. So first, uh, I do want to apologize. I had said that the uh, thrusters here, the main thruster casings, were designed for the Sage thruster, when in actuality they were designed for the Titan engine, and that's actually what we stopped using because we couldn't confirm it was properly balanced. I do want to thank those of you who gave me the information for the Sage thrusters, and I do apologize for mentioning those by mistake when I actually should have mentioned the correct thrusters. Uh, you'll notice here on the thruster housing the design is actually too large for the uh, Sage thrusters or pretty much any other thruster other than the Titan engine to properly fit in. And uh, basically the gist of that is we weren't 100% certain on the uh, balancing of the Titan engines compared to well, the size, the production, the energy use, and wanted to uh, confirm that before we continued with it. Now, we haven't quite figured out what we're going to put into the uh, thruster housing in the meantime, assuming that we can't use those Titan engines due to uh, balancing issues, which we'll, we'll have to check on to complete the design, of course. So keep an eye out to uh, see if we addend that, uh, do an addendum for that later to confirm that the Titan engines are indeed balanced, or if they're not, of course, to let you know that they are not. So, moving on from that, uh, we've changed a number of the thrusting. We've actually uh, switched off of using large thrusters to the uh, medium thrusters, which are technically not part of the vanilla game, but they are the developer's official mod releases to the uh, workshop. So those, I, if you for whatever reason are reluctant to use mods, I would definitely recommend picking up any of the Keen developer mods off of the workshop, because they are optional. They are made by the actual game developers, and of course they would be balanced in that regards. So we've used the medium thrusters in a number of places where we had large thrusters. You'll see we've uh, stripped off most of the guns and we've put new guns on. Uh, this is what we're going to do here, basically, is we're going to get it completely functional and designed as a base model. And then we'll have variants for it, and then of course we'll upload the base model for you guys to play with yourself. But then we'll have variants for it for different weapon types and whatnot. Now, if you're not familiar with the official real-world naval classification of a battle cruiser, a battle cruiser is basically a ship that is roughly the size, if not larger, than a regular cruiser. Has the same armor capacities as a regular cruiser, but sports the firepower of a battleship size vessel. So, basically, you think uh, glass cannon. That's pretty much what you get with the uh, battle cruiser. Though, granted, they can take a heck of a beating in the real world and in most games. And that's pretty much what we're going with here. Is even with the light armor, this will take a heck of a beating. Of course, you replace it with heavy armor; it'll take an even stronger hit and would become a uh, full-on battleship at that point. Um, getting back to it here, uh, what we've done here is we recessed the uh, large thrusters here on the side and put blast doors here. You do see the uh, conveyors for the uh, turrets there. All the turrets are conveyored up. We'll show you that when we go inside, of course. Uh, we've dropped off the uh, single large thrusters here, which I've got to actually redo that because those aren't supposed to be centered. Those are supposed to be... Anyways, these are supposed to be two of those there, not just one. So let's go ahead and correct that. There we go. Go in here. Cut that out. That there. So anyways, uh, we've got these hangar doors that we've put on a number of them. You see we also added some non-recessed, non-covered thrusters there. Uh, the gist of this is that when you're in uh, just uh, traveling mode, I guess you could call it offhand, but uh, completely navigational, you'll have all of these doors open. All your thrusters will be exposed and fully operational. And we're going to set it up in such a way that you'll be able to, at the click of a button, disable those thrusters entirely and close those blast doors for sort of a uh, battle slash siege mode. That way you'll have your uh, primary thruster options completely protected and you'll still have navigational thrusters for all directions of course uh, basically the gist of that is to uh, provide you enough protection to your thrusters so that 
in the midst of a battle after you've killed your opponent and they've done some damage to you, you don't end up with a uh, lack of navigational ability. Okay, so we're moving on from that. Uh, this is pretty much the uh, stock weaponry we're going to go with here. It's, I uh, believe it came up to a total of almost 80 Gatling guns are actually on it right now. And then there's the four Minotaur turrets, which are not official mods, of course, but I really love the design for them, and I love the way they play out, and they look really good here up on the nose, and that's pretty much your main battle cannon on the default design. Granted, as I said, we are going to come up with several other designs, uh, variations thereof. Uh, there is a lovely turret mod, which we've downloaded and been playing with here, that actually does full-on battleship turrets, which I'll show you right here. And they operate just as regular turrets, but they're fairly powerful and fairly well balanced from what I can tell. Of course, we need some full-on testing to confirm that. But uh, we will look at adding that onto it later on for a variant, for uh, a more heavily armed variant. Alright, so we've taken a look at the hull here. Let's go ahead and go inside. First thing you're going to notice here at the hangar bay is, of course, the uh, airtight hangar doors we've added. And we've added a uh, cupola site on either side there. Uh, those levels are not fully fleshed out yet. Uh, and inside here, the hangar is greatly reduced in size. Uh, we had large cargo containers and the floor, which we cut out. And we'll actually be redoing our cargo system here. But you'll see that there is airtight hangar doors on all ends here, rather than just the gates. And that's going to be for sealing off your actual hangar. Now, what I'm thinking is to add over here sort of a um, access area for cargo, resupply, and parking small fighters. So what we'll have is we'll have a fighter hangar on either side, basically, and in here you'll just land your larger transport and crew uh, carrying troops, whatnot. All right. So in here, of course, uh, this is all not flushed out yet. Uh, you'll notice that the conveyor system for all the turrets is completely rounded up together, and there are redundancies. Uh, I did show you in some of the previous videos the two basic types of conveyor systems you want to go with the large ship. There is the uh, spinal type, and then there is the dual conveyor system type. And now, for combat ships, you definitely want to go with redundancy. You want to have these dual connection points. So if we take fire and we lose this section up here, uh, these two turrets, which are right past these two, are still being controlled or routed by the over here. Of course, uh, symmetry cut it off on the bottom, but you'd get the idea. Basically, you would still have routing to actually get each and every turret fully supplied, regardless of taking damage in one section or another. And we have that redundancy all throughout the conveyor system here. Uh, it's going... Uh, through these two spinal columns here, and then it separates into the next set of turrets. And, of course, under the floor, it continues in the two spinal columns, all the way up to the uh, Minotaur cannons up here. Alright, so now we're up in the nose. Uh, you'll notice first that we have the single layer of airtight hangar doors there, and there's that little ledge here. Uh, you could take a very small craft and land it here, of course, so you could actually use it for maybe a fighter or gunship or just a drop-off point for troops. Uh, ideally, we'd probably have this as the same area you would board from a station, but making a gantry walkway that would attach to here is going to be a whole other project altogether. Alright, and then next is the dual airtight hangar doors, which are just down the ramp from here, and that just is going to help you get your seal, of course. We're still going to have to do the ventilation systems and whatnot. Alright, so this forward section here, it's going to get fleshed out. We'll have uh, various different objects in here. have not relegated which sections of the ship are going to be used for which as yet. But uh, basically, uh, we went out with a sectional design to cut off primary sections. And then, of course, we'll have the ability to cut off individual rooms as we expand upon those rooms. So this whole front section will be cut off here. And you'll notice here, and this divides as it expands, you've got that oversight room up there, which we'll probably do like a security room up there. And this has got airtight hangers as well. We'll expand on this area here. This is likely going to be like a crew quarters area right here that you can travel through, or a mess hall. And, of course, it seals again here. Now, you'll notice that up top, we have the same seals. So, these are actually um, set up, so 
they seal at the exact same level, the exact same spot. So again, we're doing that segmented uh, approach here to make sure that we can cut off entire segments as we take hull damage. And of course, um, we haven't set up the uh, stairs and elevators and whatnot to get to the upper level yet. Now you'll notice, past all the conveyors, our bridge area, primary bridge area, is still up here. We don't have anything set up for it, not even a control as yet, because we've stripped power out. But of course, we've also cut away into the lower section. And what I think we're going to do here is we're actually going to mirror the top, even with the windows, and basically turn it into an observation deck for uh, basically a lounge type area for the crew, for morale. Because you'll notice uh, anybody who's familiar with our larger real world ships or pretty much any Navy, you'll notice that they actually do have lounge areas and whatnot because morale is a huge part of uh, Navy life there. So you're going to be at sea, or in this case at space, for an extended period of time. You definitely want to have the uh, ability and placement for people to be able to relax. All right, and of course you'll see the thrusters are right there. Those are the ones that have the external shields. So I'm not overly concerned with those being right up there. And of course we can always, we have plenty of room to add up to two more layers of armor there to uh, add some compensation for that. Now, uh, we did cut the, let's go back downstairs when we get to it. We did cut out the, uh, the battery blocks that were at the end of each thruster, so we've got a huge space. There was about 40 in each thruster, so there's four of those times 40. And then we actually had another 30 spaced battery block that was in what is now our hangar area, and actually had about 20 gyros in each area as well. Now, of course, we've got to find placement for all of that as well, because we're still going to need gyros, we're still going to need batteries. Batteries are very important for large ships, because they will give you the ability to operate the ship once your primary power source has been crippled or disabled. So, if you lose a reactor, or you just get cut off from your uranium supply or solar power, you're going to need those batteries to be able to operate the basics, maneuvering thrusters, closing and opening hatches, air, oxygen as well, because obviously oxygen is now a critical part unless you are playing without it altogether. So of course uh, we're going to flush out these hangars so we can set up our fighters in here, our cargo system as well. Ideally we want to set it up with the connectors, but we might go ahead and just stick with a uh, manual loading, depending on which fighter design we go with. Uh, we've got a few designs already, but we might need to improve those. Actually, we do need to improve those because they were all created prior to the oxygen and cockpit update. Alright, so that pretty much covers our update on how the battle cruiser is, where we've gotten with it. Uh, of course, let us know what you guys think, if you have any uh, suggestions for it as well. And uh, hopefully it will prove to be something that you guys enjoy, and we'll definitely continue working with it in that case, and not have to shelf it again. All right, and of course, as always, I hope that was helpful and inspirational in some way to you, and thanks for watching, and have a good day.